Hey, David Brewster here with another 3 for All, and this is 3 Zach Wild licks from 1988. And I know for me, when I first discovered, you know, Zach Wild, he popped up in guitar magazines, and I was like, who's the new guy, you know, playing with Ozzy? And he looked young, you know, he had this very distinct look, you know, kind of reminiscent of Randy Rhodes, you know, when his hair was kind of straight. And uh, he did have this kind of, like, uh, image kind of crisis, I think, at first, because he had, like, permed, hairsprayed hair, long straight hair and then now he just looks like some kind of viking you know shred guy or something but uh let's see let's bring up one of those photos let's look at uh you know kind of his look over the years okay not not that hmm well that's that's interesting but that's still not the right the right era Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. You know, like early Zach Wild. Um, so for those of you watching this that are familiar with Zach Wild, maybe you're familiar with, you know, Black Label Society or uh, Zach Sabbath or, uh, you know, the various, you know, other places where you can hear his music, obviously with Ozzy. Um, but BLS has been around for a long time. He also had Pride and Glory. So here's a, just a kind of an image, you know, showing a little bit of his uh, impressive, you know, uh, recording resume. So for me personally, I think uh, Zach is just shining like the sun when you put on uh, No Rest for the Wicked, you know, 1988. Um, that album just kicks ass, you know, seriously. Uh, Bloodbath in Paradise and Fire in the Sky and Demon Alcohol and Crazy Babies and all those songs. I mean, that's a great album. And he came out swinging, you know, I mean, you could tell the pressure, you know, probably from Ozzy. Um, I'm sure Ozzy was trying to you know, kind of dispel, you know, uh, any loyalty the fans had with Jakey e. Lee, which obviously has been impossible because, uh, you know, Jakey e. Lee is still, uh, you know, a very uh, respected and, you know, just a, a, a an icon, really. And of course, I mean, what can I say about Randy Rhodes? Uh, so really everybody that Ozzy's worked with over the years, you know, Tony Iommi and Gus G, there's a whole bunch of guitarists that he's played with that are exceptional, you know, but really I think most people, if, if they're not thinking of Sabbath, they think of Randy, they think of Jake, and they think of Zach. So speaking of those three players, I did have a lesson in uh, this issue of Guitar Player from last year, the March uh, 2018 issue. Zach was on the cover, and inside you'll find my lesson, uh, The Wizards of Oz, where uh, we're basically looking at some licks and phrases, you know, from Randy and from Jake and from Zach Wilde too. So I'm really proud of this. You know, this this lesson definitely, you know, I mean, aside from being in Guitar Player Magazine again, that that was a complete honor. And I'm still working for him uh, and writing for him. But, uh, you know, I was just blown away. Like it, it satisfied the teenage kid in me where it was like, yeah, you know, you wrote this Ozzy, you know, lesson. And I got to talk about, you know, three of my heroes, which I have a lot of heroes on, you know, guitar. But, uh, that was really cool. Okay, and I have to admit, one of my favorite Zach Wild moments has nothing to do with Ozzy or Black Label Society or any of that stuff. Um, it was his kind of cameo appearance on Aqua Teen, which, you know, was on Adult Swim. And it was like the Spirit, uh, what was it, Spirit Journey Formation Anniversary episode. And, the, you know, the one where Shake rewrote Happy Birthday, and he had Zach Wild play guitar, and Getty Lee, well, it was Getty Lee, uh, it wasn't actually Getty. But it really was Zach on, on that episode, and you could hear his guitar, and, uh, you know, he was being pulled around, like, with white horses on this chariot or whatever. I mean, that's a hilarious episode. So if you're not hip to Aqua Teen, check out that episode, because that's, I think it's from, like, the second season, I think. It's brilliant. All right, the three licks we're going to look at came from his live solo back in 1988. I think it was in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, which ironically was the same, uh, you know, city. I don't know if it was the same venue. It probably was, but, uh, you know, Van Halen's Live Without a Net was also filmed in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Probably the exact same arena. But uh, really cool solo, and there's tons of stuff going on. I mean, he is just brutal, you know, uh, the intensity, the speed. You know, I mean, there's really not a dull moment uh, during the lead. Um, he's playing behind his back. 
Uh, he holds the guitar up, um, you know, vertically and starts doing these trills and stuff. I mean, he's doing some crazy stuff and just running around on stage. All right, the first lick is this tap bending idea. And in 1988, you know, tap bending had been around for a little while. And there were some kind of famous, you know, songs that featured it before, uh, before I caught, you know, Zach playing with it. So if you listen to Panama, you know, by Van Halen. <laughs> You can hear Eddie doing that, you know, the Attitude song from Steve Vai, you'll hear Steve do, uh... And of course the weight solo, you know, from White Lion, good old, uh, you know, Vito Brada. Uh, he was doing a really interesting thing at the beginning of that lead. You know, where you're basically tapping the note and then bending behind the tap, you know, with your, uh, your index finger there, and then sliding the tap up. But this idea you can definitely hear Zach do, and he did a lot back then. He still does, but he did a lot, you know, back then. So he's doing a um, kind of a pre-bend and release, and then when he releases the bend, he taps. He's basically uh, pre-bending and releasing uh, the 14th fret on the G. So think of this kind of in the key of E, I guess. But we're going to bend that up a whole step, and then pick it, release it, and then as you're releasing it, you're going to tap the 22nd fret, and then while you're holding the tap note, you're going to bend uh, behind it, release the tap, and then release the bend. So I know that sounds kind of complicated, but it looks and sounds like this. And he did that a lot. So here's what it sounds and looks like. And I really like that sound because you hear like this descending noise, then all of a sudden you hear this high note that rises and then you hear the descending noise again. So you're, you're kind of caught off guard with that lick because it just sounds like there's, you know, like it's like an air raid siren or something, this weird effect, which is really cool. <laughs> The next lick is this whole tone scale thing, and if you're not hip to the whole tone scale, it's basically a um, kind of symmetrical scale made up entirely of whole tones or whole steps. And you know, it sounds something like this. The scale sounds like this. You know, and it has this really weird kind of Twilight Zone kind of flavor. Now in the lick, he basically grabs this G sharp with some vibrato. And then he comes down that scale. And when he reaches that E note, then he basically ascends this flat five kind of series where he's moving between E flat five and uh, he just kind of keeps climbing up. Like that, very Randy Rhodes flavored, you know. And then he takes that and moves it all the way up here. Now, uh, here's, the, here's the lick so you can hear it and see it. The camera got kind of weird. Like, I didn't shoot this footage, obviously. I'm just borrowing it. But uh, the camera got kind of weird. It sounded like there were fireworks or something that went off at one point. Pretty cool lick, though. Big time, you know, Randy Rhodes thing there at the end, too, with that, that held, you know, flat five. Really ugly and sinister, but I love that. Okay, the last idea here uh, is some of his stretch pentatonic playing. And I know when I first heard Zach play, um, you know, I heard these extremely fast pentatonic licks, and I couldn't quite, you know, figure out what he was doing. And my ear heard it as this, you know. And I could definitely hear those notes. But I couldn't, I, I could never get it to sound quite the way he did until I discovered he was doing stretch pentatonics. So instead of this, he's doing this. that lick because it's just blurry it just flies by and um, you know slowly we're basically doing that pull-off pattern and then repeat that exact same thing on the B string and then reach over and grab that 12th fret on the G and the pattern's gonna change ever so slightly to keep it you know an E minor pentatonic 
then move that down. Really cool lick. cool lick and it just sounds so fluid and, and fast too and the accents you know uh, in just the right places really cool all right that's going to wrap up this look at three licks from zach wild so be sure to you know kind of check out uh, some more of his music and if you haven't heard no rest for the wicked run to your nearest computer record store your, your cell phone whatever you know whatever you listen to music on you know, hop on YouTube or wherever you want to go and just listen to that album. I mean, it's awesome. It's, I mean, he was coming out swinging, like I said earlier. I mean, just a flamethrower of, you know, great guitar. So uh, leave some feedback and some comments, and I'll be back with some more material very soon. And please subscribe to Late Night Lessons and uh, rock on. Thanks.